My name is Yohit Smuts. I'm the head of data analytics at Payprop, and I'm also the author of the quarterly rental index. Tonight, I'm going to take you through the latest um, Payprop rental statistics up to the end of September. I'm going to talk to you a bit about how the economy is currently impacting tenants. And I also want to talk you through steps that you can take to ensure the health of your rental book in this current tough economy. So let's start with the trends that we've been seeing in the rental market. I can just share there. There we go. Now, as much as we all want to put the pandemic behind us, it had repercussions, unfortunately, on most industries, including the rental market, which you can see here on the graph. Uh, just after lockdown was announced, this was the last quarter of pre-lockdown life, um, rental growth literally halved within a quarter. And that was, if you think back at the time, that there was a lot of uncertainty about whether um, tenants are going to have a job. Many people um, had to take a reduction in income. So it makes sense that there was an immediate effect. Unfortunately, as you can see here, um, that kind of spilled over into 2020. And there was very low rental growth um, throughout last year. Now, the pandemic wasn't the only contributor to this. Um, there are other contributors to this as well. One of them is that with the lower interest rates that we experienced at the beginning of lockdown, tenants who were financially able to bought their own properties. So they left the, the rental market permanently and there was a bit of a lower demand um, for properties due to that. If we look at um, a stat from Payprop's annual survey last year, we'll see exactly that. Um, here are the results. So we'll see both sides of the coin here. The question was, why are tenants moving? 65% of respondents said that they're moving because they're buying their own properties. So those are the tenants who are financially able to. But 58% also said that tenants were moving because they're looking for a smaller and presumably more affordable home. The third reason that we see here is that tenants are looking for a home with office space. Um, which also intuitively makes sense, right? Because the pandemic kind of changed the way we work um, and many companies uh, became more flexible with their work environments. Luckily, as we just saw, there are, uh, let me go back there, there are signs of recovery in the rental market um, with rental growth increasing during the most recent quarter. This was the one up to September of uh, that increase was 2.9%. That is far off and far better than what we, that what we saw uh, last year this time when rental growth was only 0.2%. However, if we plot um, the rental growth versus inflation, the picture is a bit less rosy. And the reason why I say that, your commission income as an agent increases with the rental growth rate, right? But your costs are most likely uh, closely, more closely linked to inflation. Um, inflation during the last quarter came in at 7.8, 7.6, um, and September is not out, that 7.6 is a forecast, but that is over 4% higher than the rental growth. So from a business perspective, if your, if your commission income is growing at three and your costs are growing at seven, there is a bit of a mismatch um, and you are losing some of your purchasing power of that income that you have. You can also see on this graph that the gap between inflation and rental growth um, is increasing. Um, and it's, it hasn't always been this way, believe it or not, not too many years ago, uh, rental growth actually outperformed inflation by quite a bit. There are of course other factors is affecting rental trends, right? The activity of, of industries within each province, for example, so mining. Um, but if we look at a provincial graph and provincial growth rates, we'll see that some areas are performing way above average. In the Northern Cape, you'll see rental growth in the last quarter came in at 8.1 versus the national of 2.9. But these obviously also the underperformers, the free state, unfortunately, in the most recent um, quarter saw negative rental growth of 0.2%. Another factor affecting 
um, the growth rates in certain areas is sea migration that's continuing. Many people are moving to coastal towns or different provinces, firstly because they have the flexibility to do so with this new way of work. But the pandemic also made people rethink their priorities. Uh, and more people are realizing the, the importance of balance in their lives. And coastal and smaller towns offer the best of both worlds. If all you need to do your work these days is a stable internet connection, right? So those immigration trends also affect um, rental growth. And of course, the supply of properties within those areas that are high in demand. So if we look at the provincial breakdown, you'll see that apart from the rental growth that varies, so does the average rent. Um, and that is also because of many things, um, the high demand obviously, but some provinces are just more expensive than others. Uh, as you'll see here, the Western Cape continues to be the most expensive province and the Northwest, where there are a lot of student rentals on Payprop's books um, that will affect the statistic is currently the lowest. As I'll point out again later, knowing what is happening in your area and your province is really key to delivering great service. And this is where a resource such as the paper of rental index um, comes in quite handy. So where do we go from here? As much as I wanna be optimistic about the rebound that we're seeing, it is difficult, if not impossible, uh, to predict what the rental market will look like in a year's time. And the reason for that is that there is just currently so much uncertainty in the world. And in our globally connected world, what happens in other countries also affects us. Just last week, Business Insider published an article in which six experts said that markets are at a breaking point. And that really shouldn't come as a surprise. If we look at various markets and economies around the world, we, we rarely see any good news. Um, most notably, large global um, countries like the US and the UK, and even South Africa, are experiencing abnormally high levels of inflation. Um, the US has the highest inflation that they've had in decades. And this is, of course, driven by many things, one of them being the rise in input prices, such as oil and gas, which has become much more expensive since Russia's invasion of Ukraine earlier this year. Food prices are also affected because Ukraine, for example, is usually a large exporter of grains, barley, wheat, corn, and they aren't able uh, to export at the moment. Further to that, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news when I just want to cover the, the um, most important drivers. The supply chain gridlock um, that was experienced and has kind of eased up a bit now also uh, contributed to inflation because it limited supply of many of the goods that people purchase uh, and that of course pushes up the price. In South Africa, as you know, we also further have to deal with ESCOM's inability to supply steady electricity, and that unfortunately costs the economy millions and billions of rand. It also unfortunately increases the chances of our economy um, going into recession. In the most recent quarter, I don't know if you've seen, but economic growth was only 0.2% year on year. There are also indicators pointing to a possible global recession on the back of all that is going on in the world. So consumers in South Africa are currently facing a bit of a, a triple blow, uh, if I can call it that, between inflation, a rising interest rate, and very slow economic growth. As I've mentioned, inflation is above 7%, although I think we all know that not everyone's um, cost of living increases by 7%. If you have private medical and school fees and all of that, your inflation is most likely a bit higher. So to combat inflation and to protect the currency, the Reserve Bank has been forced to raise interest rates. Um, unfortunately, you haven't seen the impact of that on inflation. Um, inflation continues to be high, but high interest rate, which effectively raises the cost of money, further hurts economic growth. 
So why? So while there is a reason for the for the interest rates going up to combat that inflation, it negatively affects uh, economic growth. So that is a bit of a, a double-edged sword. Stagflation is a term used to describe exactly such a phenomenon. It, uh, it's a period of high inflation and stagnant economic growth, and it's currently experienced in many countries in the world. If you look at, I want to show you an interesting stat. If you look at uh, global Google searches for the word stagflation over the past five years, uh, it looks like this. You'll see that there was quite a, a, a spike in the last year or so. So people are becoming um, more aware of this term, and I think they feel it more as well. Uh, if you want to see a breakdown of a regional breakdown of where people search for it the most, uh, you can go to Google Trends um, and play around with it if you want. So how is all of this affecting tenants? So if we look at a tenant's income basket in a month, the salary, they have debt repayments and other monthly obligations, they have a rent component, and then they have disposable income um, that covers everything else from groceries to school fees to entertainment and all of that. Inflation affects this disposable income basket and this debt basket to a certain extent as well. Rising interest rates affect the debt basket as well. And the fact that economic growth is slow means that the, the income, the total basket grows at a much slower pace. So basically the only place that there is a bit of give um, is the rent because you can only cut out so many of your expenses um, and then, then you're down to necessities only and that's where you're spending your money. And you can only increase you can only limit your debt so much. Most people have a car that they have to pay off or a credit card or, so there is some, some control, I wanna say that a tenant um, can exercise on this basket, but really only so much. So the fact that, that the only unaffected basket is the rent basket really shows that tenants don't have the ability to afford higher and higher um, price increases. So that goes back to that stat I showed earlier, tenants are moving to smaller properties just because they, they don't have anywhere that they can be squeezed anymore. <clears throat> so what does this mean for you as a rental agent? What can you do to ensure the health of your rental book? So firstly, and this might be a bit obvious, but vet your tenants. We just saw earlier that many tenants bought their own properties um, during the pandemic or when, when interest rates were lower. So those good tenants have left the market permanently. So the importance of vetting your tenants properly, I don't think I really can overstate it, but make sure that you, that you don't only look at a credit check. If you can, look at a credit check that combines credit data with rental data. Um, Pay Props Tenant Assessment Report does exactly that. Then phone the references that a tenant or an applicant provides. Have a look at the um, bank statement or their salary. And, and let those things guide you to ask questions. So for example, if someone had an uh, unsecured short-term loan two years ago, maybe ask the question uh, instead of just throwing out uh, the application just because you saw something on the credit check that you didn't like. Next up, control tenant arrears. With tenants being financially squeezed, um, it is more likely that they might miss a rent payment or do a partial payment um, just because they don't have the finances to cover that in a particular month. Also remember that tenants are also human. So have a conversation with them if you can. But I think the important thing is controlling tenant arrears, knowing why a tenant is in arrears and getting on top of that as soon as you practically can. I think it's very easy to say, oh, you know, let's see if he pays next month. 
but the larger that that outstanding amount becomes, the less likely you are to collect that rent. The other thing from a business perspective is if that tenant doesn't pay his rent, then you don't earn your commission. So that will then in turn affect your cash flow. So controlling tenant arrears um, is quite important. Then moving on to number three, use PropTech that saves you time. Make sure that you spend your time um, doing the activities that add, add value to your rental book, to your landlord's lives and to your tenant's lives. Sending invoices, drawing up manual statements, making manual payments, reconciling by hand. These things don't add value, but they have to get done. If you use the right prop deck in this, situa in this situation, that can automate all of these things. That will give you the time to do the people things, to build relationships, to spend time on maintenance um, and whatever you, you want to do in your rental book that adds value. That gives you time to do those things. Number four, use prop deck that is secure. So during tough economic times, and unfortunately we've seen this at PayProp as well, um, fraud and cybercrime increases. Um, internal fraud as well. And that's why a program or software like PayProp allows you to set permissions, to control who can do what, um, and also gives you something like the audit log where you can literally track every single action that anyone with access to your portfolio uh, did during a specific time. So make sure that you protect yourselves, that you protect your landlords, and that you protect your rental book by using PropTech that is secure. Fifth, offer great services to landlords. What we've seen in the beginning of the pandemic, and that's also one of the survey results, was that quite a large proportion of agents cut their commission, um, the commission percentage that they charge, just to keep a landlord. So while it's very easy to, to say, Mr. Landlord, please don't go, I'm going to lower your, my commission percentage to 7% instead of 9 it's very difficult to have the reverse of that conversation. You can't just go, Mr. Landlord, I'm going back to 9% from 7%. So cutting your commission is never advisable just because that reverse is so difficult. But instead, what you can do is approach the situation and increase the value that you add to your landlord's lives, back to value adding activities. So at Payprop, we have an owner app, for example, which is a, a live, uh, real-time app where that a landlord can just look at his portfolio, his properties, um, see the damage deposit that the tenant holds. Um, just that transparency um, is another value add to your landlords. Something else that we have at Payprop is a property account. Um, to me, it's, I always say it's, an, it's a no-brainer. It's really just a kitty for a landlord where you can keep additional funds so you don't have to go to your landlord on the 20th of the month um, when he also doesn't have any money anymore and say, I need 2,000 Rand for a burst geezer. So little steps like that, and I'm sure you can think of, of many more examples, little steps like that that increases the value that you add to your landlord's lives um, really can, can protect your, your rental book um, and your portfolio, especially during tough times. And then lastly, I know I mentioned earlier, know your market. Um, it, might, it might feel like an obvious one, but you'll be surprised at how many, how many agents don't, don't pay attention to what's going on around them. But knowing the market that you operate in can help you manage expectations. It can help you increase the value that you add to both your landlords and your tenants. For example, if, you're, if you market a property that is too expensive, that will stay vacant um, and that will cost the landlord money. So knowing your market, knowing the, the right price um, to charge for, for a property, um, not underpricing that property as well, really is important for you to distinguish yourself as a good agent. 
um, good tools that you can use that paper put out. Um, we put out a quarterly paper parental index that you can subscribe uh, to on our website. And we also do an annual state of the rental market survey, which I took a stat or two from already. But these are, these are just tools. They're publicly available to you. And they just, they just help you to be a better agent. So I want to invite you to subscribe. And when you read the rental index, look at the stats and think, how does this affect me? What insights can I take? And what actions can I take um, to improve my rental book? And that really is that um, from me. If you have any questions or any comments, feel free to, to reach out to me. Um, let me know what you, what you feel. Um, and if you want anyone to reach out to you to show you a bit more about paper, you can also reach out to me and I'll get the right people um, to contact you.